with just uh, 24 hours to go to the end of the submission of files for the 2018 presidential elections. Uh, Joshua Nabangi Osi of the Social Democratic Front and Roger Chantal Chulu pay their turns at uh, various ELECAM head offices in Douala and uh, Yaoundé to uh, submit their candidatures. In the meantime, uh, two others who previously declared their intentions have withdrawn from the presidential race. Also in this newscast, uh, the cholera epidemic hit the Litawa region after the north and central regions of the country. In this newscast, we tell you what authorities in the northwest region are doing to stop the spread of the cholera epidemic in that part of the country. Those are the top stories. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the English Prime Time on Spectrum Television coming your way from Douala in Cameroon. The flag bearers of the Kwa O Cameroon political party, Kwak, has uh, thrown in the towel over his intention to go in for the 2018 uh, presidential elections. Bernard Jonga says that he will not stand in the polls. He blames the uh, chaotic political climate in the country, which to him does not favor debates on key issues. Another candidate to throw in the towel is Hile Kamga of the Offer Ranch, who has also bowed out from the presidential race with just 12 hours left to submit uh, candidatures at ELECAM. In the meantime, uh, Roger Chantal Chole has also submitted his uh, candidature for the 2018 presidential elections as well as uh, the SDF presidential aspirant Joshua Osi, who was today in the Litua regional capital Douala to uh, submit his uh, candidature. He was accompanied by party chairman John Fundy at the Littoral Elecam head office in uh, Daido. At the end of the submission exercise, Joshua Osi took off time to react to recent calls for coalition against uh, President Paul Bia, while John Fundy reveals his motivation behind the new SDA flag bearer. Let's hear them. If we have to go into a coalition with another political party uh, that, is, that has as well deposited its candidature files today, it must be uh, something that is negotiated first of all. Secondly, uh, you know, and I always say this, you cannot go into a coalition to come out weakened. You must get into a coalition to come out strengthened. So uh, we are what we are. Cameroonians where we know where we stand. Our doors are wide open for any candidate or any political party that wants to come and join us and come and help us um, transform this country as from the 8th of October. We are going in this election to win, so our doors are open. It's like a train on the care. Those who want to join are welcome to join, to go to that. If people believe that we need a two-month negotiation in order to get there, I think um, it is just derailing us from what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to reach out to Cameroonians right now. We're supposed to organize ourselves. Uh, Cameroonians are expecting us on the 7th of October. They're expecting us for an election. They're not expecting us to agree with other candidates before we go to that election. So I think it's um, important that you understand, I want to reiterate this year, that uh, we are not closed to any form of alliance or coalition. They can come and discuss and negotiate with us. Uh, we're ready to talk, but uh, that is not the condition sine qua non for us to go to an election. It's why I have personally come for you people to take note that it is an SDF uh, candidate, not a personal candidate as me, Joshua Osi. It is the SDF putting Joshua Osi. So th that's why I've come on behalf of the party to put my hand on his back for him to drop the documents so that the whole world sees that the SDF is one. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Joshua Osi, SDF flag bearer, as well as the chairman John Fundy, reacting after the submission of our candidatures for the 2018 presidential elections just to uh, make uh, our viewers understand that the candidatures will end, the submission of files for the candidatures will end uh, tomorrow, Thursday, July 19, 2018. In other news, the divisional officer for Douala 4 has called on traditional rulers and the population to collaborate with administrative and security officials to ensure a peaceful conduct of the 2018 presidential elections by the way to armed robbery and other forms of 
insecurity and also kick out cholera from the municipality. Jean-Marc Ekwa Banga was speaking at a meeting that was also meant to clear the air on recent arrests made in Bonaberry in the past week. We have details with Henry Wana. Given the strategic nature of the Douala for municipality, which acts as the gateway in and from the littoral region, there is always the need for continuous security check, especially at a point in time when the municipality is hosting Cameroonians from the two English-speaking regions as a result of the ongoing Anglophone crisis. It is against this backdrop the Divisional Officer for Douala 4, Jama Kekwa Baga, chaired a security meeting recently to decide on how to overcome such challenges that may arise at any given time. Le premier... The first issue was about security in our municipality. The second was about the upcoming presidential election to hold on October 7. And the third focus of the meeting was about the cholera outbreak, which is up again. Together with the participants at this meeting, we have been able to discuss on how to go about handling these issues. However, traditional rulers, as well as blockheads, who attended the meeting or presented the daily challenges their respective neighborhoods faced on a daily basis, Jamak Ekwabaga, equally refuted the news that animated the social media a few weeks ago of mass arrests of Anglophones living in Bonaberry. They are Cameroonians like every other, though of English expression, who were caught at an unholy place when the operation was being carried out. The non-respect of town planning in the municipality equally dominated deliberation during the security meeting. The actors resolved to support the government in its strife to render the Douala 4 municipality free from urban disorder, criminal activities, as well as ensuring the smooth holding of the 2018 presidential election in their municipality. To the southwest region, security officers have apprehended two individuals alleged to ex uh, alleged uh, to be extorting money from the population. This follows numerous complaints from uh, inhabitants of the town of Kumba. We have details in the following report. Some two individuals allegedly acting in the name of Ambazonia soldiers have been apprehended by security officials in their hideouts in the city of Kumba. Mark Tembeck and Thomas Agbo, 20 and 38 years respectively, were arrested this Wednesday, July 18, following several complaints from Kumba city dwellers who received calls from the above individuals asking them to pay a stated ransom in order to be saved. An allegation accepted by the victims who confessed of being in the business since May and have collected over 400,000 francs from six individuals. Yeah, so we used to move around town, mostly in business places. We look at their doors, the tops of their doors, receive contacts from individuals, then call them, ask them for money, claiming to be Ambazonian agents. That's what we do from day after day, day after day. And some do send us money. We have collected about 400,000 francs. The senior divisional officer for Meme, Shambaleng Tondong, on his part expressed great satisfaction with the arrest of the individuals. He held them responsible for the massive movement of city dwellers out of the town. He's the kind of citizen nobody wants to have in the town. Many families have abandoned their properties because those boys are calling, treating them, asking for money, saying that they will kill the, the member of their families. And you see uh, today, this man is uh, with us, all of them, there are two, two, two of them, they are with us. After sending away many families, it is worth noting that ever since the crisis escalated, illegal activities have been carried out by individuals in the name of Ambazonian soldiers in order to extort money from the population. In the second of our lead stories, authorities of the Daido Health District have confirmed a case of cholera at the Ndongbong neighborhood in the Douala 5 municipality. Another case is suspected around Bunasama in the Douala 4 municipality. In the meantime, Darling Fejo tells us that authorities are already on the alert to prevent the further spreading of the disease. Her report. 
A case of cholera has been recorded and confirmed at the Daido Health District, notably at Ndokbong, a neighborhood in the Dwala 5 municipality. Another is suspected in Mabanda in the Dwala 5 council area. Il y a eu un cas euh, qu'on a notifié à partir de, de, de l'hôpital du district de Bonassama. A case of cholera has been identified here at the Bonassama Health District. It is said that the victim consumed pork meat and diarrhea and vomiting followed. He was immediately rushed to the hospital, but at the moment we cannot confirm if it is cholera or advanced diarrhea. The presence of this viral infection recorded on July 17, 2018 in Douala comes after an outbreak in Mayu Olu Health Zone in the north region of Cameroon in May which affected 43 persons and claimed six lives. Another death was recorded in Yaoundi Central Region. Faced with this threat, improved sanitary conditions Access to safe water, proper waste management, food safety and other hygienic practices have been recommended. Measures which, according to the World Health Organization, could help prevent a nationwide epidemic like that recorded in 2010, which claimed 750 lives. Health authorities in the northwest region have assured the population that measures are being taken to uh, stop cholera from entering the region. The assurance, however, comes within a disturbing context where the prevailing socio-political crisis has led to the forceful shutdown of some health districts in the northwest region. We have details with Lovenbe. Following the recent cholera outbreak in the northern and central regions of the country, the Northwest Regional Delegate for Public Health, Dr. Kingsley Cheso, has enlightened the population about this epidemic and the measures put in place. According to a press release from His Excellency the Minister of Public Health, um, an epidemic of cholera has been confirmed in the northern and uh, central regions. Um, true, we are not yet affected in the northwest region, but what uh, the population of the Northwest uh, region should first of all know is what cholera is. Um, cholera is actually an infectious disease um, that manifests with uh, very frequent watery stools that is profuse diarrhea and uh, this can be associated with uh, vomiting or, or not. But what we should know is um, uh, because of uh, profuse diarrhea we can, uh, the patient can um, have severe dehydration and this can eventually lead to death. We are taking a number of measures, especially given our socio-political context, to ensure that uh, we don't have this epidemic uh, um, uh, come to our region. What should be done to suspected cases? important to wash our hands with soap and water uh, before and after meals and uh, especially after we use our toilets. And in case we have somebody who dies and we suspect that that person died of cholera, and uh, we should avoid manipulating the cops. With the socio-political instability in the region that has led to the closure of some health districts, what is he doing to ensure a continuous flow of health care services? The crisis has had a lot of impact in uh, the functioning of our health facilities. We have uh, most heat health districts, which are Fundong, uh, Njikwa, Mbengui, Batibo health districts. And uh, unfortunately, in those health districts, we have situations where um, some of the health centers have been shut down. But um, that notwithstanding, we have taken a number of measures. We've been discussing with some international organizations, humanitarian assistance organizations, and uh, in the days ahead, um, the Minister of Public Health will be giving us instructions on what to do um, in order to, 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 to get to these target uh, populations where we have these difficulties and provide health care. Let's come back to Douala, where inhabitants of the economic capital are on high alert following the confirmation of a cholera case in the region. Speaking to our reporter, Henry Wana, most of them have prescribed improved sanitary conditions as the only way out to keep cholera at bay. His report. Since the month of May 2018, six persons have died in Cameroon as a result of cholera outbreak according to recent report from public health ministry officials. 
but to some Douala denizens, they are ignorant about the outbreak of the pandemic. To the few who are aware, proper hygienic conditions should be of paramount importance to every household since Douala is still to be affected. We know of that. Well, probably this year, concerning Douala that uh, I recite, we, don't, we have not heard of that now. But that does not mean that it, it cannot happen. But the first measure to take is to wash your hands well before consuming anything that you eat, especially fruits. You wash the fruit also before you consume them. There is no doubt most Douala city dwellers won't want to experience what happened in 2010, whereby more than 750 lives were lost as a result of the disease repeat itself in 2018. Cholera, which is a very dangerous disease, comes mostly from the toilet system and uh, waste, the hygienic condition of our environment. So I give the blame to the government mostly, so to the councils, whereby they spend their time moving around shops, stores, Call, talking of uh, hygiene is celebrity, that means hygiene and uh, cleanliness, leaving the essential places that they have to move to in the quarters to control the toilet system of the inhabitants to see whether are they using their toilet well to avoid cholera and other diseases. With the rainy season already around the corner, this is a time for council officials to double their effort and ensure the population is living in a healthy environment to prevent the region from being affected by the cholera outbreak. After the North Center and Little War regions, the Southwest region might just be the next stop for the cholera epidemic as the population of the chief town, Boya, has been experiencing water shortage for some time now, a situation which has exposed them to uh, doubtful sources of uh, water. We have details in this report. Fresh water is necessary for the survival of all living organisms. Thus, going by this saying that water is life, there is every need for humans to consume more of uncontaminated water. In Boya, water crises have heightened, although we are in the peak of the rainy season. To this effect, some denizens within the locality have tilted consumption to other sources of untreated water, such as boreholes, wells, streams, amongst others. Meanwhile, those with access to treated water experience an irregular flow which makes it all the more difficult. Hence, due to the mass influx of displaced persons within the town, some health experts have showed out devastating effects of unpurified water. Some of the effects is like diarrhea as we call. The common cause of cholera that we have now because people drink water that is not really portable. Despite its repercussions, these few are left with no choice. Those who are carrying, doing their businesses, they have to carry water to, to sell to shanties. They have dated the water that we cannot again carry it for consumption. There are times where those might still carry water. Water is very dirty. In our own house, we have many people who have been from different places to come and sit in our own house because of this crisis that is happening in our own country. The health personnel further caution utilizers on how to preserve their water. One of the things I would recommend is the fact that if you have water, definitely you should do some preliminary treatment like boiling, even though some parasites resist boiling. However, since our body solely depends on 60% of water for survival, authorities of the Boyo municipality are enjoined to re-strategize measures as well as earmark more projects through the rehabilitation of existing structures to ensure the healthiness of its community, void of cholera, typhoid, and dysentery. Now, continuous rainfall in the city of Douala has uh, triggered a new fashion trend within the population. Boots, rain suits, as well as umbrellas are becoming common accessories to spice up the dressing mode of most people. John Paul Sama. As seasons change, people have learned to do the same. In the economic capital Douala, most inhabitants have turned to the use of plastic shoes. Be it Konami, as they are popularly called, rain boots, or just simple boots, they all help protect their users' feet from getting wet during this rainy season. I prepare myself, I prepare my rain boots, I prepare my raincoats, and even with a helmet. So that after the, about these two months to three months, 
I will not attack any no citizen who is going to attack me. So with that, I'm safe from the rain. It slows down my activities. When there's a raining day like today, it slows down my activities because at times the rain is too heavy in such a way that I cannot go out. This man says, aside his boots, he also puts on raincoat when going to work as a means of protecting his outfit from getting wet or dirty. To maneuver their way through this season, bike riders have resorted to mounting umbrellas on their motorbikes as well as putting plastic papers in front of the wheel in order not to get wet. This is an unpredictable season and in order to survive through it, I simply carry around my umbrella when I'm leaving the house. Roadside vendors on their part say the rainy season might be here but it doesn't stop them from carrying out their daily activities as they have bought big umbrellas so their clients can dine under without getting wet. Out of the country, Estonia now hosts NATO Center of Excellence on Cyber Security, a country which previously suffered a large-scale cyber attack. Uh, the Japanese government has decided uh, to join the center due to fears on uh, cyber attacks on the 2020 uh, Tokyo Olympic Games. We have details with the VOA. A series of high-intensity cyber attacks on critical infrastructure, including power grids and water purification plants. The scenario here is fictional, a so-called live fire cyber exercise known as Operation Locked Shields, run by NATO's Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Estonia. It is about friendly competition, but what makes it the world's biggest is, first of all, the number of nations who are contributing to it. So we then bring the, the creme de la creme of all nations together to, to match each other and also learn to cooperate with each other. While Operation Locked Shields is a practice run, the threat is very real. Everything is technology dependent and therefore everything could be, uh, could be hacked. In the winters of 2015 and 2016, Ukraine suffered hacking attacks on its power network, shutting down systems for several hours. Kiev blamed Russia, one of the primary sources of cyber attacks globally. Disinformation using the web and social media is another growing problem facing governments. Analyst Ben Nimmo. On this information, Russia is hyperactive and has been for a long time. If you look at the Russian interference operation in the US, as far as we know, it started in April 2014 and it was still going in October 2017 when it was shut down. So they've had a three and a half year operation running, which included yeah. a reported at least 100 people, several thousand accounts on social media, over 50,000 bot accounts amplifying it. This was a big, big operation, which was then further amplified by state propaganda outlets like RT and Sputnik. Did NATO leaders at the just concluded summit do enough to counter these threats? They appreciate them more than they did two years ago. Uh, and you can see that from the summit declaration itself. For the first time, it mentions disinformation as a specific threat and as, as part of a bigger picture of hybrid warfare. Since 2014, NATO's core principle of collective self-defense, Article 5, can be invoked in the event of a cyber attack on one member. The response could include sanctions, cyber responses, or even the use of conventional forces. While that may seem a remote possibility, NATO's Secretary General warns that a cyber attack could be as destructive as a conventional military strike. Henry Richwell for VOA News, Tallinn, Estonia. And that does it for this edition of the English Prime Time on Spectrum Television. We thank you very much for your kind attention. From the entire news crew in Douala, have a good night. STV, votre télé.